us or most of us are going through a lot of you know, things in these tough times. Some of us might already be losing faith. Some of us already wants to give up. Or some of us already doubts and asks, where is God? You know what? Hold on to your faith. Keep on holding on to God. You are just tired. So right now, as we worship, find rest in His presence. In Matthew 19, 26, Jesus said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. So have faith. Be reminded that nothing is impossible with our God. Trust His plan. Trust His will. Not your will, but His will alone. Remember that you are a warrior who conquered and won previous battles. Battles that you thought that are greater than anything. But look at you. By the grace and help of our living God, you conquered and won those, those trials and hardship. So now is not the time to give up, brothers and sisters, warriors. Be strong in your faith. Keep going. Remember, no weapons formed against you will prosper. The enemy is a defeated foe. He cannot defeat us because Jesus already won the victory. But the enemy will always try to distract us and make us feel discouraged. So you have to be strong. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the unchanging word of God. Stand firm, warrior. Nothing is impossible to our God who is the God of all possibilities. I believe. 
for this opportunity once again to listen to his word and uh, meditate on the word of God we thank him for this uh, virtual worship we thank him for the opportunity to come together and sing worship songs and pray prayers and prayers to our God to intercede for people especially those who are affected by the recent typhoon and even the ongoing pandemic we thank the Lord even for uh, His message that will once again inspire us and the message that will continually move our hearts, move our lives to extend help to those who are in need and to respond accordingly. Let's commit this time to the Lord. Father in heaven, we pray that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds once again to give us discernment as we listen to your word. We pray for your mercy to be upon people who were affected by the recent typhoon in Manila, in Luzon, in northern and southern Luzon. 
And we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to guide our leaders, lawmakers, as they respond appropriately and sufficiently, Lord, to the needs of those who were the vulnerable families. We pray that you will continue, Lord, to work miracles and multiply the five loaves of bread and the two fish to meet the needs of the people. I pray that this word that will be given to your people will be applicable and will be relevant and the word that will be spoken will give glory and honor to your holy name this is our prayer in jesus name amen our topic today is authentic religion i searched in google and when i entered the word religion and entered it uh, about 2 billion and 80 million results came up in just 0.52 seconds you see that's that's how many religions <laughs> we have in the whole world and you know there are at least some 4300 religions of the world this is according to adherence or an independent non-religious religiously affiliated organization that monitors the number and size of the world religions Major religions include Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Taoism, Judaism, Confucianism, Baha'i, Shinto, Jainism, and Zoroastrianism, and a lot more. And among this, the, the top religion, of course, is uh, Christianity at 33.06%, followed by uh, Muslims at 20.28%, and so on and so forth. So let me ask you, how do you define religion? Some says religion is a man reaching out to God. But God reaching out to man is salvation. Uh, there are those who say that. Is, is, really, is religion really bad? Is it, it is, is it just an attempt, human attempt, to connect to God? Now, in in relation to that the topic authentic religion uh, what is what is the importance of faith and work what is more important faith or work what we believe dictates how we behave and so our behavior is always affected by the way we believe and religion is is a way of belief that's that's the system of beliefs belief of people and so let me say this both faith and works are important according to james the brother of jesus the lord our our savior and lord without works faith is dead and so you see the balance works should be motivated by faith and faith should be shown in works james primary concern is for for followers of jesus to live authentic and wisely both authentically and wisely both in words and actions and so authentic religion our topic today is revealed through our words and deeds it is always seen in what we say and what we do our faith and our work reveal authentic religion and authentic religion is a balance of verbal proclamation and visible demonstration of the gospel and so when you say religion it it can be tested if it's real or not by how people show it in their words and demonstrate it in their action is authentic religion displayed in our daily living let me ask you is your religion that is genuine displayed in your way of talking, in the way you treat others, in the way you, the way you live every day? Is it revealed or manifested? You know, th there's a lot of inconsistencies. I, I always remember what Father Bolatao said. He is an SJ, a Jesuit. He said, uh, that there is a split level Christianity good on Sunday but the rest of the week you cannot 
see the goodness or the testimony as, as a Christian. You know, there's a problem with Christianity today because of that inconsistency of what we speak and what we do. We're living double lives. That's why people are often confused or worse, they are offended by Christians. Mahatma Gandhi, you know him. He is a great leader of uh, the, when, when India was under the British rule. Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi uh, fought for their freedom. And, you know, he said this, and I quote, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. This is a very sad comment. And another one by the name of Karl Marx, he said, and I quote, Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, and the soul of soulless condition. It is the opium of the people. And quote, opium of the people. It's like you are being, uh, you, you are injecting an opium, a drug, so that your, your, your heart will not feel, your life will not feel anything. That's, that's the criticism of Karl Marx about religion, in, including Christianity. And so these criticisms call us to be more authentic in our religion. Whether whatever denomination you are part of and what religion you are you're in, you, you belong to, is your really religion authentic? Are you practicing both in your words and in your actions your belief that will, will be life-changing and that will benefit the society for the common good? How can our Christianity be more reflective of Jesus Christ? That, that's a question to, that we should answer. And I hope our message today will address this question. How can our Christianity be more reflective of Jesus Christ? James talked about three manifestations of authentic religion that is more reflective of Jesus Christ. In James chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, that's our text for this, this day. Let me read it. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's re religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. James chapter 1, 26 to 27. Now, here are the three manifestations of authentic religion. First, authentic religion is manifested by how a person controls his or her tongue, by the way we say words, by our speech. And so James says, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, does not control his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless take note of that your religion my religion does not count anything does not amount to anything if we don't have the control of our tongue if we are careless of our words of our speech our religion is worthless according to james chapter 1 verse 26 to james the tongue is directly connected to the heart there's a connection with our tongue and with our heart. It is the gauge of the heart's condition. The tongue is a great revealer. Jesus affirmed this truth when he rebuked the hypocrisy of the Pharisees saying, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's in Matthew 12, 34. James was so serious in this warning because he heard Jesus said these words, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. You see, by our words, we will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. 
Matthew 12, 36. This is what Jesus said. And James heard it from the Lord. And so our final destiny is largely dictated by the words we say. And so I, I remember one children's song. It says, and this reminds us, Oh, be careful, little mouth, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above is listening down with love. Oh, be careful, little tongue, little mouth, what you say. Let us be careful with what we say. Moreover, the words we speak can either make or break life. What we say can bring healing or add insult to injury. The sage, the writer of the book of Proverbs, is right when he wrote, There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 12, 18. James deals with the use of the tongue extensively in the third chapter of his uh, letter, chapter one to uh, chapter three, one to twelve, but uh, it is enough at this point to see the importance of controlling our tongue, as it manifests the authenticity of our religion, and so it is therefore important to let God's word dwell in our hearts, so that the words we say will bless others, will bless our family will bless our neighbors, will bless the people. Our speech problem, let me say this, our speech problem is solved once the heart issue is addressed. When our problem in the heart is solved, is addressed, then automatically the way we say words, our speech will be improved, will be affected by our heart condition. A heart that is in tune with God will result to praise. How often do we praise God? Can, can our family, can our children, can, can our spouse, can, can people surrounding us see our, hear, hear us praising God? Can they, in our presence, will they be blessed because of the words we say? Are we giving encouragement? Are we giving words that are praiseworthy? Are we telling people good news? Are we proclaiming something that will, that will be a life-saving message? Be careful with the use of your tongue and check your heart. Uh, is our heart right with the Lord? Am I in tune with God? Is the word of God dwelling in my heart? So that in a, on a daily basis, I can say words that can heal. I will say words that will build. I will share something that is a good message to people. Secondly, authentic religion involves deeds of compassion. Religion that, that is genuine is not just up to what we say, good things we say. No, it has to be shown in our actions, in our deeds of compassion. It means helping the most vulnerable in society. In the case of the early church, the orphans and widows. James wrote, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction. James chapter 1, 27a. You know, there are many people who are afflicted today. In the early church, the orphans and the widows were the most vulnerable at the time. And the early church in the first century became champions for the poor. They were champions of the orphans and the widows, the afflicted, and the most vulnerable. Consequently, a number of priests, according to Acts chapter 6, verse 7, a number of priests, the hardcore, were converted to faith because of such compassionate act. Because they saw the genuineness of the faith, the genuineness of the religion, through their acts of compassion. This hardcore, the priest at that time, followed the Lord Jesus Christ. They were converted to the faith. These deeds of compassion is so hard to resist. Emperor Julian the Apostate, 361 to 363 AD, 
who, so, who sought to discredit, discredit and destroy Christianity found it hard to dismiss Christians as they help even their own poor in Rome. You see, if people feel that you care for them, if you show them compassion like the Good Samaritan, if they sense that you really are there to meet their needs, and then you speak words that heal, words that build up, my friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord, they will be drawn, not to yourself, they will be drawn to the Lord Jesus. They will be drawn to God. More than ever, we, the body of Christ, needs to be in the forefront to reach people in hard places, in places where hope is in short supply, in places where the holistic needs of the people are badly needed. Look around you. Listen to the news. We see a lot of suffering. You know, in four weeks, we have had six cyclones in the Philippines. And you see a great, tremendous need around us. We expect the body of Christ to unite. Of course, we, we allow the government to do their task, to do their work. They are called to serve the citizens, the country, the community, the city. The, the, every, every area in the Philippines should be served by the government. But let me tell you, the body of Christ should be at the forefront to bring hope in hard places, to bring light where there is darkness, to address the need, the dire need of the vulnerable families. Let's be involved in social evangelism, whatever you call it, community development initiatives, and other collaborative efforts that will address poverty elevation, including spiritual bankruptcy. We are the church. We are the agents of the kingdom of God. We are the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit has, has entrusted to us the resources. And these resources should be used to advance the kingdom of God. And it happens one person at a time, one family at a time, by sharing the good news, by saying words that build up, and then doing do deeds of compassion. Third and last, authentic religion is manifested in living holy lives. This involves moral uprightness and the pursuit of holiness. If the first one is about showing, saying things that uplift and build up, if the second sign, manifestation of authentic religion, is uh, demonstrating in our words, in our actions, compassionate actions and deeds. The, the third is very important because it talks about blamelessness, about moral uprightness. And so James continues, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. James chapter 1, 27b. A religion that is authentic is able to transform a person inside out. So our transformation should begin from the inside. It, it is not just the surface, the visible outside. It's secondary. What is important is the internal transformation. It is transformative. The, the authentic religion I'm talking about is transformative. And so Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If anyone, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the most important effect of religion that is from God. It sanctifies and transforms the believer. And this transformation is a lifetime pursuit to Christ-likeness empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so if you recall Galatians chapter 5, 21 to 22, the fruit of the Spirit has been given to us. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The nine fruit of the Spirit has been given to you. And the Spirit has dispensed gifts. We have all the gifts needed so that the ministry of Christ can be continued through, through us, the body of Christ. And the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is in each of us so that we will be transformed and shaped into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. James made it clear 
that pursuing holiness is turning away from the love of the world. Once you are a believer, once you are a child of God, to those who believe Him, to those who receive His name, they become children of God. That's in, in the Gospel of John, first chapter. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So there is transformation when you are a follower of Jesus. And as a result, we will pursue holiness on a daily basis and shun away from the worldly things. The Apostle John reiterates this when he wrote, in 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Let me read this one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever and so here's a religion that's genuine it shows in speech that produces life rather than death it manifests in works of compassion towards the most vulnerable and it leads to a process of transformation from the inside out this is authentic religion in closing let me leave you with these questions number one How's your speech? Do you bless or curse? Second, have you been involved in the visitation ministry for the poor and needy? Number three, are you experiencing newness in your life daily? Those are the questions I will leave to you. And C.S. Lewis says this, and I quote, you can go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending and call. Thank you. Good morning, church. And today, as we prepare to give our best before the Lord Almighty. Let me just read a portion of scripture. In Genesis chapter 14, I'll start in verse 17 up to verse 20. Let me read it for us. After Abram returned from defeating Kedor Laomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, King of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. You know, when you look at this portion of scripture, this is the first ever mention of tithes and offerings. And here is where Abraham and uh, his friends defeated a very powerful grouping of people led by the king of Elam. So before this, he was out there to rescue Lot. Because he was captured by the king of Elam and his allies. So what happened during that rescue, he more than just rescued uh, Lot, he defeated kings. Malalaking kaharian to. And in so doing, here is this man, the king and priest of Salem, Melchizedek, where he offered first everything he had. Because during wars, hindi ka lang naikipaglaban. Normally, para sa time natin, parang may loot yan eh, yung finders keepers. Kung ano, pag natalo mo sila, yung nakuha mo sa kala, sa'yo na yan. But you know what, before ginawa ni Abraham na kunin man yung kung ano man yung nakuha niya doon sa mga kalaban niya, what he did first was to honor God by going into this priest king, si Melchizedek. And like as we read, he was blessed by this man. 
Sabi niya, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High who delivered your enemies into your hand. Because at that time, he offered a tenth of what he had. You know, as we give our best to God, let's always remember, there are a lot of things that are really pressing and important sa buhay natin. But you know what? Why God bless Abraham? Because God always see the heart of Abraham. His heart is to worship. You know what giving is? Giving is summarized into one word. It's worship. Kaya pag nakita natin mula dun sa tatlong wise men, di ba? they gave into the baby no, no, kay Jesus nun. That was not just giving, that's worship. And as we give this Sunday, we realize that Lord, in this time of uh, great need you know, and challenges, give us, my family and I, not just blessings, but multiples of blessings. Because the idea is not just us or ako or kami lang ang mabless, but so that you'll be able to bless so many more. And that's the idea here. That's the reason why when he honored God, you know, in front of this uh, priest king, si Melchizedek, he was blessed by God. And then nakita mo later on yung verses 21 to uh, 24, uh, sinabihan siya ng king of Sodom, oh, kung gusto mo, Abraham, yung what, keep what you have. Sabihan, no, no, no. I will only take what is mine to give to God because I don't want anyone, including you, the king of Sodom, to boast that you made me rich. You know, that's a statement na dapat lahat tayo meron. No? I believe riches has not just to do with bank accounts or what you accumulate. Real riches comes from heaven. And real riches comes and starts within the human heart. So as we honor God, isipin natin, Lord, more than multiplication, more than multiplication of the things I can touch, or the things I can count, or the things I can keep. Multiply my heart so that I will always be generous first to you and next, not only to my family, but to my fellow man. I believe yan po yung puso natin lahat. And as we look to Abraham as an example, let's always rejoice this Sunday to say, God, I want to honor you, just like our father Abraham honored you. Because God promised him so much, the same way that we are children of Abraham, the same promise God gave Abraham is the same promise he's giving us. Why? Because adugtong natin si Abraham. And remember this, as we honor God this morning, God will always be who is. He's a promise keeper. So that nobody but nobody in the world or yung talent natin that we can boast to say, Dal magaling ako o dal mikakilala ako, they made me rich. No. God made you rich from the heart, materially, resourcefully, financially, abundantly, over and over again. And it starts with worship. And remember this, worship is giving. Giving is worship. Can we pray? Lord, thank you so much. Lord, multiply the works of your people, multiply the works of our hand, and as we produce wealth for you, we know that this wealth is so good because you said every perfect gift comes from above. Give us the perfect gift, but it has to start from you and let it stay in our heart, that from this heart of ours, we'll be able to worship you with everything we get and from heaven, just like you bless Abraham, just like Melchizedek bless Abraham. We receive the same blessing, multiply. Lord, the works of our hand, multiply our blessings, our finances, our resources, our favors, our relationship, our protection in everything in every way. Multiply the joy of our heart and the happiness within because every perfect gift comes from heaven. Let us honor you today just as thousands of years ago. Abraham, after winning the war, honored you before honoring other people. We want to honor you with all our best this Sunday. Today, may you multiply it so that we will be blessed in the, in the home and that we also will be a blessing to others because we are blessed to bless others because we are your children. We bless you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your great abundance. We worship you. We give to you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Thank you so much. And as we give, please take note of uh, the details down the screen on how you can give your best to God, either at the BPI Family Bank or to GCash and Paymaya accounts written on that. God bless you guys so much more. Happy Sunday. Let us now receive our Father's blessings. And now, may the love of God our Father continue to be manifest to you, that out of His immeasurable riches in Christ, He will show you favor in all that you do and cause you to succeed in all your plans. Meet every need of your life and grant you your heart's desires. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ always be with you to strengthen you in obeying His will. And may His grace be there to comfort you in times of disappointment and discouragement. And that grace also enable you to overcome every challenge that you face because He stands with you. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fill your heart always with the joy and peace that comes from Him and enable you to be strong even in the face of trials that you may be going through right now and continue to bring glory to God as the Spirit of God leads you and directs you in doing what is right in your Father's eyes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord raise us His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His shalom. All for His glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Editions. Happy in Christ! This is Kuya Noel and hope you guys are doing fine right now, okay? Yes! They say that money changes everything. I think I don't believe in that, okay? God can change everything, right? I have here a half dollar. That means it's a US coin, right? Okay? Now, the devil came to destroy man, but Jesus came to give life and restore us back to God. What's this? Yes, the coin is restored, right? Yeah, same thing once again. God sent Jesus to restore us back to God. Are you happy? Yes, yes, of yes. Of course, yes. And of course, set back, relax, okay? We will continue our story about Moses and the 10 plagues that God brought in the land of Egypt. When Moses was in Egypt, 
Well, he said, God, I am a man with, with a problem in, in speaking, in speech. But God said, it's okay. I have made you like God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron will be your speaker, will be your prophet. He will tell everything what I have told you. And so, when they reach Egypt in front of Pharaoh, the staff of Moses that was, you know, Aaron was holding, he dropped it on the ground and it turned into a snake. Wow, snake. And so, when the Pharaoh saw it, he summoned, he asked his magicians also to turn their sticks, their stuff into a snake. Indeed, it turned into a snake. But the snake of, or the staff of Moses, the snake, swallowed all their snakes. But then Pharaoh's heart was hardened according to God's plan that God will harden his heart so that God will pour out his miracle, his power over Egypt and, and punish them. And so the next morning God said, you go, next morning you, you go to Pharaoh okay and show him what i will do and so the next morning indeed when moses was there in front in the nile river he dipped his you know his stuff in the water and turned into a blood and all the nile river turned into blood even their drinking cups their pots their jars the water inside turned into blood and they cannot drink it. Wow, all over. Nile, river turned into blood. But then Pharaoh's heart, still hard, didn't obey. Because God told Moses to let my people go. But Pharaoh doesn't want the Israelites leave Egypt, right? Because they were the Pharaoh's slaves. And so the next day, Moses, God told again Moses to, you know, perform something. And then when Moses went to the Nile River, oh, well, the Nile River was clear already because, you know, uh, you know, Pharaoh, Pharaoh is, you know, very tricky. Also said, well, okay, I will let you go. Okay, just let the blood uh, water turn into normal again. Okay, but the next day, his heart was changed. And so Moses let the frogs come out from the water. And all Egypt was filled with frogs. All went into the household. And all the streets are filled with frogs. I know some of you are scared scared of frogs okay but not not me okay and so still the heart and you know you know the whole the whole frogs were piled up they're dead and they stink the whole egypt stink but then pharaoh's heart still hard he won't let the people of moses leave egypt and then again god told moses okay you do this thing and indeed the next day, there were millions and millions of gnats, you know, these insects, they suck animals and the, the, the blood, including people, I think, no? Okay, and then all Egypt was filled with these gnats, with these insects, and Egypt was in trouble. But still, Pharaoh's heart is hardened according to God's plan, so that God can perform more miracles, judgment upon Egypt. And then God said, okay, I want you, Moses, to perform this thing again the next day. And then flies came again. Okay, field, Egypt, the whole Egypt. All the houses inside are filled. Even the fair was being bugged by this, you know, oh, Moses, please ask your God to, to remove these flies here. I couldn't eat. You want, you want to drink 
your coffee or your water with lots of you know flies inside i don't know okay and so moses moses plead to god and then the flies were gone but then still you know what some people are our hearts are really hard and so again god told moses about this thing that will happen what will happen next all the livestock the cows carabaos camels donkeys you know the sheep oh everything died in egypt except not one of the israelites livestock died no because god separate you know the judgment okay between israel and egypt egypt was the one that's God wants to punish because of their sins. And indeed, the next day, oh, God sent this sickness, this disease, boils all over the bodies of, of the officials, the pharaoh, uh, the, the slaves, all Egyptians. Got this boil, oh, so painful. Okay? And then, what happened to that boy? Well, God said that you get some soup in the furnace and spread it in the air. It's like virus, right? <laughs> okay. And so, when this dust, the soot spread in the air, it la landed on their on their skin. That's why they got boils. Okay. And then, the next one dreadful judgment was God sent hailstorm over egypt in you know, a hailstone you know it's like the ice big rocks they're falling from heaven and there was thunder and lightnings and it rained you know this this hail okay if you're in the states okay it can break the 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 the, the roof it can break the you know the windshield of your cars and so when when some of the officials heard about this they took their slaves and animals out from the field but some didn't didn't you know obey so all that are in the field died because they were hit by this hail <gasps> okay and all the animals too were dead that's how powerful imagine you know a hail coming from heaven okay the projection you know the speed okay and and I, I don't know how big was that okay okay but it died everything that was on the field and destroyed some of their crops also but still you know Pharaoh still very very you know stubborn doesn't listen and so God sent the locusts. You know the locusts? They are huge uh, grasshoppers. Okay, have you tried eating them? <laughs> I did when I was young. Okay, in our place, we were, you know, uh, attacked. You know, our place, there were so many locusts in the field. And people were catching it. They're cooking it, okay, for food. It's crunchy though. Okay, but then the purpose of this locust is to, to kill all or to destroy all the vegetation the plants the trees and nothing spared except the plants or the, the crops that the israelites had planted for them mm -hmm. and so okay still the pharaoh's heart is so hard and so god said i will send darkness over Egypt for three days not nights three days okay during daytime it's totally dark they couldn't see each other it's so dark except there were lights in the place in Goshen in the place of the Israelites wow okay only in Egypt was total darkness but then okay you can go now but leave pharaoh said to moses you can go now but leave the livestock the animals but moses said no 
because we want to held it, a, a hold it festival in the desert and offer sacrifice to our God. So we need the animals. But then, Pharaoh's heart is really stubborn according to God's plan. And God said to Moses that you shall tell your people to kill a fattened, you know, sheep and then put their blood on your door, door, doorstep, door frames at the side and under the top with the blood. When I see, when the angel of death will pass by, then I will spare you. Okay? And then, that evening, the angel of death came and all the firstborn son died, including the Pharaoh's first son, firstborn son, to the slaves, and all Egypt were wailing, shouting, because of the firstborn sons died. Okay? Now, that's what happened when we disobey. And so, Pharaoh told Moses, Okay, Moses, you have done too much harm in Egypt. Let your people go now. Go leave Egypt and pray for me. Okay, kids, I hope that you learn something. God is powerful and sometimes when people disobey, there's always punishment for disobedience. Now, our memory verse is found in Psalms 95, verses 7 to 8. If today you hear His voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear His voice, harden not your heart. Psalms 95, verses 7 to 8. Thank you for our two little kids who made the memory verse today. Hope to see you again someday, next Sunday, rather. And see you again. Always remember, kids, that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.